You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. We've got a really cool show here, uh, for once. Um, <laughs> some of our all-time favorites in the room. i got to go around the room and actually start. One of, uh, one of our favorite people, Commander Aaron Fitzgerald. Of, Hello, Combat Radio family. Yes, from everything from Bleach, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, Monster High, to, well, the resume goes video all the way. Games yes, and video games and video games. Hundreds of, hundreds of I'm interesting I'm so titles. excited to be here and co-hosting. I, what? I know. How much? Mayhem. I, I know. And to add Trouble. to it, we brought probably the best actor of our generation. A man of stage and screen, of just He's such blushing. profound pizzazz that, you know, there is nothing, there, is there any, there, you know, since, since Olivier's passing, since we lost Charles <laughs> yes, Lawton, yes, yes. you know, uh, since true. we, the yes. great titans of our, of our industry have passed on, but there is still hope for greatness because we have the man who made a name for himself in The Lost Skeleton of Cadavra. Fantastic. The, and its sequel, uh, Dark and Stormy Night, Donnie Brasco, other great titles. Fantastic. Andrew Parks, how are you? Hello, Andrew. I'm fine, thank you. I feel I should talk in a different voice after that introduction. <laughs> you <laughs> absolutely you should. Just do, into Olivier. You know, just do the whole show as Olivier, please. Yeah, do you mind? Perfect. Well, it's not really Olivier. I, I don't know. It's sort of a cross between James Mason and... Yes. I, I, I don't know. I could do it like this, I suppose. Yeah, you know, just whenever I hear an because accent... Actually, like, awesome. Well, no, it, 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 it really is. I am English. And I can do this American accent when I, I but it's it's it I I just feel that we have a better chance over here. I mean, you know, all if, of us. whenever anyone does a James Mason imitation, I immediately want to start having cocktails. I don't know what it is, but oh, I immediately isn't that a cocktail right there? No, it should be. Uh. Also, rounding out the all star cast to open the show, and you're not going to believe who's going to come through the studio door later. But here's a guy who's not only been one of the all time greats here at Combat I think Radio. He looked over his shoulder. Yeah, he like, did. Who he are needs you to. About? It's not me. Um, he was. Very very, very generous when it came to our Christmas event for homeless kids, which, by the way, is the heavy subject of a book coming out, and there's some photos of yes. you in this book. Uh, but Bill Daly here, uh, top Warner Brothers senior Yay, executive, Bill. a man who uh, survived uh, Harry Potter, morning, uh, The Matrix, the Lethal Weapon movies, the Batman movies. No, I corrected you last time. I thrived. I didn't survive. I yeah, thrived. You thrived. Lied. Brought us Jonah Hex, Pluto oh, Nash. Geez. Bring yeah. it. Pluto <laughs> Nash. Yeah. Classic. You know, yeah, I have, to go, to, Nash, I have yeah. to go to both ends of the spectrum. A guy I used to deliver mail to when I started in the Warner Brothers mailroom in 2000, and they said I wouldn't amount to anything, and look at how right they turned out to be. <laughs> Shocking. Shocking. How are you, Bill? I'm doing very well. I always believed in you, though. I, you did, actually. You had that uh, – well, you were a very, very cunning executive and a very highly intelligent and motivated executive, and we loved you. You were always very kind to us. Don't look at uh, me. I don't, I've never that's been what described as cunning before. Well, I mean that in the nicest possible oh, okay. way. Not in a, no Shakespearean connotations there, my friend. And let's actually go to Skype and welcome another friend of ours who we know and love, a guy who's uh, – well – He's a directorial genius. He directed the epic La Skeleton of Cadaver, and if you haven't seen it, it's one of the greatest movies ever made. Were you in that? Yeah, and yeah. Andrew Parks was in it, <laughs> Dark and Stormy Night. In that, yeah. The man behind Steam Wars. Please welcome uh, director Larry Blamire. How are you, Larry? Hi, Larry. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. And I have to tell you, I knew right away that you were introducing Andrew Parks when you started that description. <laughs> See? Yeah. Everyone Legendary. knew. Legendary. Yeah. Yeah. You narrowed it right Legendary. down. You narrowed it right down. When, hey, when uh, when you mentioned uh, when when Bill mentioned uh, thriving and not surviving, I realized that I'm doing both. So I'm sir thriving, sir thriving, <laughs> sir thriving. Yes. There you go. There uh, you go. Yet another word for the combat radio dictionary. <laughs> sir uh, thriving. You know, I I have long since adopted the the idea that I'll just throw heavy vocabulary words out there to smell to sound smart, and no one really contradicts <laughs> me. But. You know, we it's need be- a glossary. Yes, you do. Uh, Larry, how are you? Welcome to the show. I'm good. I, I have to just start with my James Mason so we can have a oh, cocktail. God, that is James Everyone. Mason. Very good. I feel man. like the Nemo just came up to the dock and he popped out I think of the everybody, cockpit. But everybody does James Mason, yeah. I think. Bill? And, and you do, if you have a drink no, in your No, my head, brother you do does it, him, like but said. I don't do it. Oh. You know what? If you don't do James Mason, who are you in this town? Seriously. Right. What are people going to start doing? Do? And the rest of the I'm cast is done pretty he- heavy, too. Peter Laurie's imitated a lot, but I don't see a lot of Kirk Douglas imitations. Parks, you got a Kirk Douglas in you somewhere? 
No. Okay, we'll keep moving past that. Hey, let's talk Oscars real quick. Since uh, we were invited down there, we run the, uh, you know, for the last four or five years now at the Governor's Ball, we've run that illegal gambling racket (laughs) slash uh, Academy sports book. And we give the proceeds to charity. We gave, you know, uh, in honor usually of a friend we've lost. And it seems like we're losing more and more quickly. So we better take advantage of it. But let's go around the room and through the Skype universe and talk Oscars. Bill, we'll start with you since you have the (laughs) senior executive title and slash now producer. Um, who, who are your it fr- doesn't make me any more qualified, believe nah. me. Oh, but it does, my friend. <laughs> no. Who do you think uh, should take Best Picture? Let's get right to it. Um, I liked um, American Hustle. American Hustle. I'm going to go around the room real quick because I know you, got, you worked on Gravity. I yeah. want to talk about that. Oh, Andrew I Parks? That. I, I think it's a tight race. I think there might be an edge to 12 Years a Slave, which I have to say I kind of avoided at, at first. But I saw it in, in a movie theater and, and not a screener. It's a beautiful film. Yeah. It is very... T- a lot of people think, oh, I don't want to see it. It's slavery. It's kind of a... You yeah. know, dry. It's beautifully directed, and it's, it's a gorgeous film. And I'm going... I'm, we're having a little Oscar party, and I'm filling... And there's money involved. Party in and Andrew. Fantastic. Does. You know, li- li- real quick about that Oscar party. My invitation must have been lost in the mail. I, uh, <laughs> you've done the show how many times? It's the rain, I think, really. Just, you know. Oh, wow. The excuse machine kicks in. Aaron wow. Fitzgerald, your I pick? I actually am with Andrew. I think 12 Years a Slave was a phenomenal film. It was beautiful, incredibly acted, really well written, really well put together. I, I really loved it a lot. But I do want, um, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Gravity as well. So I thought that was great too, let, me, uh, let me kick it over actually to uh, to Larry Blamire. Uh, you, you know, I, uh, disclaimer, I have not yet seen 12 years um, and I, I, I will. But you, you know what? My favorite movie was uh, of the whole year was, was, was Captain Phillips. Oh, Captain seen Phillips, that. that's good. That's good. See, I haven't that's seen good. Twelve Years a Slave. I haven't seen any of this. I I, I don't see any you of it out have, of protest. You don't have any time for this. How, for the you're, Academy you're, Special Interest you're Group. You're running show. so many things at the same time. How do you even watch television? I don't see unless it's at like three in the morning or four in the morning during Monster one of my thoughts. Yeah, it's Monster High. I watch Monster High mm. with my kid. What do you want to watch, Dad? Huh? How's Monster <laughs> High sound? But I know from watching Zulu Dawn with my wife that we can never sit through Twelve, 12 Years a Slave together because uh, talk about that's the first time I've seen actively protest. Uh, you know, in my living room that discrimination against the Zulu tribes by British colonialism right there. So I said, you know what, we're not going to watch uh, 12 Years a Slave. Uh, we're going to watch something else, like, uh, I don't know, uh, Harry Potter. Bill, another one of yours. Yes, yes. What, what's That's your gravity story? Yeah, what's your gravity story? Well, you know, gravity was um, it was mostly done in front of a green screen. The, so cool. um, So when we were watching dailies every day, um, there wasn't really that much to look at. But, but they put it together... Um, Within two, three weeks of them completing principal photography, they they had the thing pretty much together. Wow. And even though it was in front of screens, it was stunning. It was just an amazing it uh, movie. It's a it's a little the version that's out there is a little bit shorter. Really? And of course it's filled out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then um and it's in 3D as well, so um, I know it's out on video, but I haven't seen the 3D Blu-rays. Anywhere. I did, and I don't like going to 3D movies. They usually give me a headache, but that movie, someone talked me into it, and I was so glad I did. That was so gorgeous. The best 3D. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the performance, like, Sandra Bullock killed it. Mm-hmm. She was amazing. To be just in front of a green screen yeah. and to, like, what? She, oh, dude, that was for real. And, and the 3D wasn't uh, extraneous. It wasn't just, you know, effects. My favorite 3D moment in the movie was when she cried and the little tear came out a little globule toward the oh, yeah. the audience and it wasn't that that was a neat 3D effect but it was uh, uh, it it told the story and it right. reminded us where we were and it it, 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 it was just a, a, how long did it beautiful. take to shoot the, the principal photography like how long of a shoot um, was that a, uh, I don't remember exactly they, you, usually they're about 50-60 days yeah. or so yeah, that's amazing. Do you I think could go look it up and find out. I, I they're nominated right for all the special effects. I haven't oh, even yeah. looked. Yeah, yeah they've sure got it. They they're going to sweep yeah. that. There's no argument there, right? right? That's pretty no. phenomenal. The um, I was quite pleased with how the film turned out. Then the, pretty much the mandate at Warner Brothers regarding 3D was always never to have things popping out into your face. Oh. You know that sort of. Um, what Isn't that the point of 3D, the though? I, I like that it no, wasn't. No, you, you, uh, you pretty much you take your proscenium and, and you, you 
build all your parallax behind it, oh, behind it. the screen. That's so why that it didn't it's give not, me a headache because yeah. it wasn't constantly. And then um, at my even face. when you shoot in 3D, you still need to do uh, quite a bit of um, of work building convergence points and things like that. I'm sorry, I walked out of the. Why Bill was talking? What are we, we talking did. about? We were talking gravity. about gravity and, and the three <laughs> D. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm back now. So yeah, and he yeah. was using words like parallax. He and did. Oh, geez. Fancy. Let me get my online Oscar encyclopedia. language. <laughs> Speaking of three D, isn't Lost Skeleton three the Lost Skeleton? You know, 3D? back from the dead is in three D. What's the name? What's the official title of that? What's the working title? The, the, the title is Lost Skeleton Walks Among Us. Three <laughs> D. Is it in three uh, D? Well, you know, it, it it is the third one, and uh, it'll which will make it possibly the last film in the trilogy. Oh, yeah. uh, and but, I'm and unless it might make be a very dumb, so that's but, 3D. but there, we talked about having a three D climax at one point, and uh, you know we're still kind of playing with the idea, so I'm not but sure. But it yet. is shot in the both dangerous and secretive process known as Skeletorama. And if we were smart, um, <laughs> there's a lot of bones. It's in a that. bare bones production. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If we're smart, Andrew oh. Parks, who has the epic <laughs> performance in the movie as the alien crowbar uh we need to do a spin-off series crowbar the magnificent crowbar goes to tijuana uh co- crowbar on the subways of london uh how about let's let's just do a bunch of crowbar you know, i like that spin-offs. i just did a graphic to do some promotion for the upcoming kickstarter and with with crowbar and lattice uh, it done like a 1950s sitcom title card kind of thing <laughs> and on Facebook, all these people are asking now for for a series. So I don't know. It might have to happen. That's a I've great got, idea. I've got the promo video to really yeah. get this thing going. Nice. Okay. Is it, you know, 1940-esque, 1930-esque radio station, right? Like yeah. the old Bob Hope Ghost Breakers. We're sending out a signal. Um, obviously, two options can happen. First, a flying saucer goes down in the background and Crowbar jumps out and makes it to the station in safety where um, – Fitzgerald and Bill Daly are manning the the microphones and doing a news broadcast, NPR style. And then, obviously, their silhouette just rolls up over the station. But it's a silhouette of a skeleton. And we can do all kinds of things, like the skeleton pacing back and forth, walking up to the window, asking what's going on in there. Um, You have to see these movies. They're just way too brilliant to even talk about on the radio almost. You do them a disservice. Uh, so that's a go, right, Larry? My idea. Uh, me... You know, it's almost like you customized that scenario for the, the for this show right now. Isn't that weird? I know it does seem like I'm shamelessly uh, putting myself somewhere in the firing line of production. <laughs> and gosh, and Isn't since I am happening? in fact shameless, that is exactly what is happening. Surprise! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! You know what? I want to take just a brief moment, though, uh, before we get sidetracked. I want to get back to the Oscar question, um, Larry. You're working on a pretty epic project, uh, Steam Wars. Ooh, what is this? Is this steampunky? Steam Wars is very is steampunky, and I it's kind steampunk. of odd because I started developing it before there was a, a term steampunk, and it, I realized that I kind of started incorporating. It, it didn't sort of happen overnight. I just it started to kind of put itself together from different things that I was into as a kid. You know, it, 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 trains and construction equipment and suits of armor and 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 so it became this this epic thing uh where it's it's the victorian age and the only difference is that warfare is is fought from these giant walking machines and they are shaped like warriors of the past and each country has their own style and there are different classifications small ones and big ones and 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 it became this this kind of sci-fi adventure Although it's it, it, it's not, I mean it's not overt sci-fi. It's 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 very grounded. I mean, it has to look like it's really 1897. You know, oh, that's it's very fascinating. Jules Verne, isn't it? Larry? Yeah, that's what. Nice. It has a Jules. It, it Verne. is. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely has that Jules Verne feel to it, and uh, I think it it in a way is a kind of um, old school adventure. I, you know, another thing I always loved was Men on a Mission movies. You know, Guns of Navarone, where he kills Dare, and and uh, other, you know, Alistair McLean kind of, kind of things. And, and, it, and it sort of has that feeling to it, as well as Indiana Jones. Well, Indiana Jones is a good point of reference, I think, if you're trying to get people's attention. Who are you producing this with, Larry? Well, we, I partnered up with, um, with uh, Jeremy Frommer and Rick Schwartz. Uh, Rick's, a, Rick's a film producer, and, uh, and Jeremy's an entrepreneur, and they have Jarek Ventures, a company they formed uh, several years ago. And uh, Jeremy had seen an article in Geek Magazine uh, showing some of my, my Steam Wars paintings, which I, I use the paintings as kind of a, 
uh, it's a nice visual tool to get across the, the concept, you know, which is so visual. But uh, we hooked up and um, and 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 the, he, he realized that there was something here, and especially with 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 the kind of the crest of the wave here of uh, steampunk is is internationally very very big right now. It is. So uh, the timing just seemed to be right. We're all sitting around in our steampunk gear right now. Right in fact. now, we I'm do wearing the show. my steampunk boots. That's no joke. I've got my Wizard of Oz, Tin Man mm-hmm. outfit mm-hmm. motif going. Mm-hmm. Parks has got this weird crowbar thing happening. It's brilliant. Bill, where's your <laughs> steampunk gear? The ex- it's, uh, it's in the trunk w- of my car. That's such a wicked executive laugh. That's the laugh you said, you know, you are so fired. <laughs> That's that laugh. Did you hear that? That's the laugh where he goes, you know... I see the guillotine in your future coming down <laughs> right on you. Uh, uh, what do you think? Steam Steam Wars sounds pretty interesting, Bill. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Why not Steam Wars? Why not Steam Wars 1, 2, 3, 4, well, 5, 6? Well, you take six. it out of the cult kind of like fa- fantasy where, where it's like a huge deal. Like I, I go to conventions and everything is steampunk. Everything. Everybody's steampunk. People yeah. don't really see it on TV right now. You would take it right into the mainstream. I think that's a genius You're idea. You're starting with a... a, a Graphic novel, though, right? Is that oh, correct? Brilliant. The, the, yeah, the idea was to Comic-Con. start with, with a graphic novel, which is, uh, you know, and, and eventually I've always seen a, a film, but uh, there's no better lightning rod, I think, for a, for Everyone a film. Everyone at Comic-Con you know. would love it. So what's yeah. the, where can people catch, there is a brilliant trailer to Steam Wars online. That much we saw, and it was really unreal to watch, especially the perspective was quite unique on it. Um, and the POV. And that was all Larry's artwork, too. Yeah. Wow. Larry, Larry's a wonderful painter. And yeah, we did, yeah, my, my editor and I took, you know, we didn't work full time on it. We took about a year to make that. And it's really just, you know, it's a minute and a half of animation. But I we were kind it. of working in our spare time. And we, we I took parts of my paintings apart and um, made them into different um, uh, pieces of art so that, you know, there were uh, a lot of in-betweeners. And basically, it's real old school animation. So, yeah, if you go to uh, SteamWars.com, you can see that. Where, 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 say that again, steamwars.com, did you say? Steamwars.com, yeah. And yep. you can see the trailer and everything. Yeah, and yeah. you can see a lot of Larry's artwork. Too. Oh, that sounds awesome. What's the uh, ETA on this epic project? I mean, when can we expect to see it? When can we be, uh, you know, buried in Steam, War, uh, Steam Wars greatness? You know, what's Steam the, Wars juggernaut. Yes. Ooh, it's going to walk over me. you. It'll, um, in a nice way, in a nice way. Uh, it, it, we're closing in on the graphic novel. There's th- it, it, it consists of three books right now, three 32 page comic books, awesome. three different teams of artists, and uh, uh, they're just about two thirds of the way, maybe a little more now through the books. Um, so that'll be the first thing. And then we want to do some eight inch resin figures um, oh, and, uh, and of course, I video like games. Yeah, I like that. So send some figures my way because I'm going to put them up for auction that at our Christmas awesome. event for homeless kids in December. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, of Great. course. You know, we wouldn't be the Combat Radio Mafia if we didn't hold you up for something towards our charity <laughs> Christmas efforts. Event, yeah. uh, but we're pretty excited about it. We've talked Steam Wars in the past, and I think now it's just a question of we got to get our hands on it and see this. Game on. You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. 